there's a lot I could say as the mother of a child who was removed from my body, a wanted pregnancy. Her name was Mary Deanna, and she would have been 15 on March 21st. But I'm just going to read these stories straight. These are excerpts from news stories. Outcry in America as pregnant women who lose babies face murder charges. This is from The Guardian from World News. All links are in the underwear. Rennie Gibbs is accused of murder, but the crime she is alleged to, alleged to have committed does not sound like an ordinary killing, yet she faces life in prison in Mississippi over the death of her unborn child. Gibbs became pregnant at age 15, but lost the baby in December of 2006 in a stillbirth when she was 30 weeks, 36 weeks into the pregnancy. When prosecutors discovered that she had a cocaine habit, Though there is no evidence that drug abuse had anything to do with the baby's death, they charged her with depraved heart murder of her child, which carries a mandatory life sentence. Not sure of this pronunciation. Bebe, B-E-I, B-E-I, Shui. S-H-U-A-I-34 has spent the past three months in a prison cell in Indianapolis, in Indiana, charged with murdering her baby. On October, excuse me, on 23rd December, she tried to commit suicide by taking rat poison after her boyfriend abandoned her. Shue was rushed to hospital and survived, but her 33 weeks pregnant, but was 33 weeks pregnant, and her baby to whom she gave birth a week after the suicide attempt, and whom she called Angel, died after four days. In March, Shue was charged with murder and attempted feticide, and she has been in custody since without the offer of bail. In Alabama, at least 40 cases have been brought under the state's chemical endangerment law. Introduced in 2006, the statute was designed to protect children whose parents were cooking methamphetamine in the home and thus putting their children at risk for inhaling fumes. Amanda Kimbrough is one of the women who have been ensnared as a result of the law being applied in a wholly different way. During her pregnancy, her fetus was diagnosed with possible Down syndrome, and doctors suggested she consider a termination, which Kimbrough declined, as she is not in favor of abortion. The baby was delivered by cesarean section prematurely in April 2008 and died 19 minutes after birth. Six months later, Kimbrough was arrested at home and charged with chemical endangerment of her unborn child on the grounds that she had taken drugs during pregnancy, a claim she has denied. Quote, That shocked me. It really did, Kimbrough said. I had lost a child. That was enough. End quote. She now awaits an appeal ruling from the higher courts in Alabama, which, if she loses, will see her begin a 10-year sentence behind bars. Quote, I'm just living one day at a time, looking after my three other kids, she said. They say I'm a criminal. How do I answer that? I'm a good mother, end quote. This story is from BBC News, The Americas. Mother charged in cesarean row. A U.S. woman who allegedly ignored medical warnings to have a cesarean section has been charged with murder after one of her twins was stillborn. Melissa Ann Rowland, 28, showed depraved in indifference to human life, prosecutors in Salt Lake City said. They said Ms. Rowland refused the cesarean because she did not want her cosmetic appearance to be disfigured. Miss Rowland, who is being held in jail on a $250,000 bail, denies the charge. If convicted, she could face life in jail. Rowland's omissions. 
An autopsy found the baby boy died two days before its 13th of January delivery. Medics said it would have survived had Ms. Rowland had a cesarean between Christmas and the 9th of January, as her doctors urged her to do. The other twin was in stable condition. A nurse at City Hospital said she heard Mrs. Ms. Rowland saying she left the hospital because doctors wanted to cut her open, quote, from breastbone to pubic bone, end quote, and that this would, quote, ruin her life, end quote, court documents say. The document also say, documents also say Ms. Rowland said she would rather, quote, lose one of the babies than be cut like that, end quote. Quote, it was her, Ms. Rowland's omissions that caused the death of the child, end quote. Kent Morgan of the Salt Lake City District Attorney's Office was quoted as saying in the Desert Morning newspaper, quote, she was given... She was given three or four opportunities to get a C-section to save the baby. She continued to say no, end quote, Mr. Morgan added. In a jailhouse interview with KSL Radio 1160, Ms. Rowland denied she had been advised to have a C-section with the twins. Quote, I've never refused a C-section. I've already had two prior C-sections. Why would I say something like that? End quote. Ms. Rowland said, unique case. In January, the Utah Supreme Court ruled that unborn children at all stages of development are covered under the state's criminal homicide statute. The law exempts death of a fetus during an abortion. The state law has been used to prosecute women who killed or harmed their unborn babies through their lifestyle, drinking, or drugs. But it has never been applied to prosecute a woman who failed to follow her doctor's advice. <laughs> Marguerite Dryson, a law professor at Brigham Young University, said, quote, <clears throat> It's very troubling to have someone come in and say, We're going to charge this mother for murder because we don't like the choices she made, end quote, Professor Dryson said. Ms. Rowland's case has already triggered a heated debate across the country. And this story from Change.org News. Now, I must preface this. This is a highly editorialized story. I don't consider this news. I consider this an editorial. Dan Savage has cited it in his column. The story from Change.org does refer to the Iowa City... Let me see. Uh, the Des Moines City Register, I believe, there's a link, but it's a dead link, so I can't verify that this story is true. But based on the previous stories, I tend to believe it is. But I'm telling you, I can't verify that this is hard news. Pregnant, pregnant Iowa woman arrested for falling down. Last month, and this is dated this month, uh, so March, April of 2012, Pregnant Iowa woman arrested for falling down. Last month, after an upsetting phone conversation with her estranged husband, Ms. Taylor became lightheaded and fell down a flight of stairs in her home. Paramedics rushed to the scene and ultimately declared her healthy. However, since she was pregnant with her third child at the time, Taylor thought it would be best to be seen by the local ER to make sure her fetus was unharmed. Alone, distraught, and frightened, Taylor confided in... The nurse treating her. Taylor confided in the nurse treating her that she hadn't always been sure she wanted the baby. Now that she was single and unemployed, she'd considered both adoption and abortion before ultimately deciding to keep the child. The nurse then summoned a doctor who questioned her further about her thoughts on ending her pregnancy. Next thing Taylor knew, she was being arrested for, temp for attempted feticide. Apparently, the nurse and doctor thought that Taylor threw herself down the stairs on purpose. According to Iowa state law, attempting feticide is... What? This is, this is badly written. Attempted feticide is and trying, quote, to intentionally terminate the human pregnancy with the knowledge and voluntary consent of the pregnant person, person, 
after the end of the second trime trimester of the pregnancy, end quote. At, 30, <clears throat> at least 37 states have similar laws. Taylor spent two days in jail before being released. That's This is the editorialism. This is part of the editorializing. That's right. A pregnant woman was jailed for admitting to thinking about an abortion at some point early in her pregnancy and then having the audacity to fall down some stairs a couple of months later. Please tell me you find this as horrifying as I do. That's not the point of journalism. You want to do advocacy journalism, you present the facts, period. You let people draw their own conclusions. Very sloppy. And it, you know what it does? When we try to present stories like this, it makes our credibility questionable because obviously we have a dog in the fight and we're not just presenting the facts. We're presenting an opinion. And so she has actually done harm by writing it this way. Anyway, it's off topic. The dis No, it's not off topic, but you understand. I want to keep the focus on these stories. The district attorney, after three weeks of inv investigation, eventually declined to prosecute Taylor. Before you get too happy, keep in mind that this decision was made not because the arrest was a travesty to begin with, but because it came to light that Taylor was late in her second trimester when she fell, not, not early in her third, as the hospital staff had thought. So, on a technicality. Christine Taylor came to them emotionally vulnerable in order to seek help for her unborn child. She thought she was in a safe place, talking to professionals in whom she could confide. Oops, her bad. Why? It's not necessary to inject yourself into the story, lady. As Robert Rigg, professor of Drake University Law School, said, how in the heck did the police get a statement made by a patient to a medical person during the course of treatment? If you still think feminism is not an atheist issue, you are in too much denial. <laughs>